Hello and welcome back. This is the Amateur Extra License Exam. We just passed the halfway point. Now we're going to be talking about some digital electronics. Let's get started. We're in section si or sub element 6 Charlie. What is the function of hysteresis in a comparator? Hysteresis is used to prevent input noise from causing unstable output signals. Now I have a quick example for this. You've got a separation here, and this separation is between a no and a yes. As long as your signal stays down here, you're good. It's a no. As long as your signal stays up here, it's a yes. But what happens if it rides the line? Oh, it switches back and forth really fast. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So hysteresis does this. It creates a gap between your no and your yes. So hysteresis is no, 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 yes. And then as it's a yes, if it dips down, it's still a yes until it goes down here and it goes no. So I have a picture for that. And if we look up here, this is an op amp for a comparator, pretty much the same thing. And without hysteresis, you can see that that yes, no is half a voltage in and zoomed in. You can see that it, it goes back and forth several times and the output changes its state several times. That could be a problem. So with hysteresis, what happens is, and, and if you want to see the circuit, there's a circuit, but see that gap? So now you have a much more solid output with hysteresis. As the, the signal is creeping up, see it doesn't change until it gets up high enough to go, oop, there we go. It changes its output, but look, it still dips down below as the voltage is creeping up because of the noise. But it stays low until it knows that it's going low. So boom, it crosses that point and then continues and that's in it this is an inverting op amp so you can notice as the voltage goes high on the input the output goes low so that is the long answer for preventing input noise from causing unstable output signals hope that gives you some kind of visual what happens when the level of a comparator's input signal crosses the threshold voltage Remember, it changes its output state from either a no to a yes. Now, in digital, it's actually false and true or zero and one. The comparator changes its output state. What's a comparator? It's one of these guys, gals, these things, these right here. Okay, what is tri-state logic? Okay, we already had two states, didn't we? We had low and high, zero, one. Well, tri-state throws in another one, and that is a high impedance output state. I did this when I did, uh, I did microcontrollers through hobby and college, and that was my favorite thing ever. But you could exploit this into what's called Charlie plexing. Now, if you like doing hobby stuff, go check out Charlie plexing. It's like duplexing, but with a third state, and that third state is a high impedance output. Um, in our case of the microcontroller, it would be an output of a zero or a one, and then it would become an input, which is a high impedance state. And you can control a lot of things with very few pins. Pretty neat stuff if you want to go check that out and get go down that bunny trail or rabbit hole. Which of the following is an advantage of by CMOS logic? Now, that, that usually means two. So it has the high input impedance of CMOS and the low output impedance of bipolar transistors. So you get the best of both worlds. I won't sing it, but you get high impedance of CMOS, low output impedance of bipolar transistors. Well, as amateur radio operators, you know, we're impedance matching all the time. So our radios and our balans and our toroids are always matching something. So in this case, that is the 
purpose of the by CMOS is that it can match the impedance of the following and preceding portions of a circuit. Which of the following digital logic families has the lowest power consumption? CMOS for the win. CMOS has the lowest power consumption. There's also TTL, which is transistor transistor logic. It consumes a little bit, a little bit more power. We're talking about CMOS being the lowest power consumption. Why do CMOS digital integrated circuits have high immunity to noise on the input signal or power supply? And that is because the input switching threshold is about half the power supply voltage. Here we are again. As long as it's low, a little bit of noise isn't going to bother it. As long as it's high, a little bit of noise isn't going to bother it. It's at that switching threshold where the noise comes in. That's where we use hysteresis. But the input switching threshold is about half the power of the supply voltage. What best describes a pull-up or pull-down resistor? Now, pull-ups is not the undies for sad hams. This pull-up or pull-down resistor is a resistor connected to the positive, that'd be pull-up, or negative, that's pull-down, supply used to establish a voltage when an input or output is an open circuit. Now that is a lot of freaking words. So here's a picture. This is a microcontroller and this is your input pin. This is your internal resistance or your impedance of the input. And imagine if I put my hand over this resistor, imagine it's not connected and you don't have the button pushed. You don't have a known logic state there. So if you were to touch it with your finger, it might use stray um, EMF from your house to cause it to register input or an output or a positive or negative, a yes or a no. So what you do is you use a pull up or pull down to give it a known logic state, even when this is floating, the input is floating. So when you push that button, then boom, you have a different state, it's ground. So it follows the path of least resistance. Bam. Okay, so that is pull up or pull down resistor. Now we're going to go look at schematic symbols for logic gates. Are you ever going to use them? Probably not. But this is an AND right here. This is the NAND. This is an OR. This is a NOR. This is a NOT. And what is that? I don't even know what that is. Let's let's go look. Logic gates. Uh, you know what? I don't even see that one up here. Let's go back. That's a weird one. I don't even see it. So uh, these are the symbols right here. These are the ones that we're most concerned with. And you have an and. You have the or is more Star Trekky. You have the nand. That means not and. So it's going to invert the output. Same with the NOR. It's going to invert the output. And then you have XOR and XNOR, which they're special in their own right. And then you have a NOT, which just if whatever comes in, opposite goes out. So what is the NAND? You have AND, and then the little circle is the NOT. So this is your NAND. So figure two is the NAND, and I did not mean to do that. Okay, next one. What is used to design the configuration of an FPGA, or Field Programmable Gate Array? And this is HDL, or Hardware Description Language. Boom, it's a programming language. So this, you can kind of see the programming language for an FPGA. I'm sure they're still used, but nowadays with with um, microcontrollers and uh, even using your Raspberry Pis or your Beagle Bones and stuff like that, I see this one is not as popular for us that like to tinker. So HDL, Hardware Description Language, is what is used to configure an FPGA. In figure E6-3, which is the schematic symbol for a NOR gate? So we know an OR is Star trek -y, right? That's three. The NOR needs the circle, so that is four. 
There we go. Oh, no, another one. Here we go. This is the last one. Remember, you only get one question out of this whole thing in figure E6-3. Which schematic symbol is for the not operation or an inversion? Remember? Remember inversion? What goes in, the opposite comes out. Bam! Number five. That's the triangle with the knot right there. All right. You've made it through section 26, I hope. Hey, if you ever need to go back and watch them, they're still going to be here. All right. If I made any mistakes, call me out in the uh, comments. If this has been helpful in the least bit, please like this video. If you could subscribe to my channel for support, that'd be excellent. All righty, you could turn off the bell too if you don't want to get any notifications. It's free, but it helps me. I'm W1RCP73.